Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. You know, every fishing trip doesn't go according to plan, does it? In fact, when I think about it, most fishing trips don't go according to plan. Not what you've had going up here. When you're in bed at night thinking of what you're going to catch the next day, you've got it all planned out, you've got all the pictures already made. It doesn't work like that, does it? Not in real life. And this was, in fact, a real, real life day. Well, guys, I'm going to go and try and find a few crabs. I think the tide's out far enough. Just need like half a dozen uh, crabs or so trying for the elusive smooth hound. Whether they've been turned over much here or not, I don't know. Blazing hot day. There's one small one there. Uh, look at all the uh, shellfish on the bottom of this. Always tip those rocks back when you finish. Hang on to that one. So you've got to scout around a bit trying to find them. I don't want to go down in the squishy stuff. I'm going to wear the gloves just in case there's anything like uh, glass and then it might cut you. You never know. I suspect everybody's been through this. I'm many times looking for crabs. Tell by the boot marks in there. I may be on a loser here. Half a dozen would do me. See now that's plastic, look, but it could be a piece of glass. No, it's small ones. Well, I'm starting to get a few now. I've come back where there's more, more weed here. I certainly got enough of fishing if I've got some ragworm as well. You think each tide fills up, but I guess, pops it doesn't. At different times of year, you want to get, I don't know, like that size, 50 pence size ones. That's, a, that's not 50 pence, it's a £1.50 size, but trust me, a smooth hound is going to crunch out big time. If you're moving fast, you don't want to grab something and it turns into a piece of broken bottle, because this is the distance where people would come and you can sort of see why. And just from up there they have a beer and a drink and then they heave the bottle over the side for some apparent reason, best known to their limited brain cells. It breaks and that's the distance. So back there you're not likely to get broken bottles but within about say 20-30 yards of a car park there is the outside chance of broken bottles. Uh, with everybody off fishing, smooth air time, hot weather coming you know, you just know people are going to be here. Can you blame them? You're going to go fishing. I don't blame them. I'm one of them. I like the rocks with a sort of angle under them like that. Come around the back of it. Nothing in there. I don't like them when they make that sucking sound. I like a sort of nice cavern underneath, if that makes sense. That one is too much water, but there's a creature moving. I've seen him. Where the hell did he go? Sometimes you can look and just see him scuttle a little, a little bit of uh, disturbance there. I missed that one. Right, five minutes and I think I'm ready to move out. Yeah, look, I've got a few crabs in there. That's the main thing. A bit of bait for a session. What I don't use to get frozen down, maybe use for wrasse. Whew. And it's good out here all in there with that weed. It's a bit squishy there, I don't want to get stuck. I have to go call for the tow truck, pull me out by Wellingtons. Well, down here on the beach, I've walked past the broken rocks here, which are normally fish the other side. There's two other guys turned up when I was here and they sort of did the long, the long steps march so they were in front of me, but they got to, to get where they're going. I've come here, as you can see, absolutely whole place to myself, probably totally useless. I've had one cast out just with the lead. I noticed there's some coloured water lying over there. Whether it's just stirred up from the eddy where the ebb tide's coming this way, I don't know. But I'm going to throw out a really chunky bait. I've got a whole mackerel which I want to put out for taupe. I've no idea whether to catch taupe in this particular spot. I've got a pretty big hook. It's one I used to use when I was going out fishing for lemon sharks and stuff. 
little tip guys if you're putting your reel down put it on a jacket or something don't put it on the on the on the gravel or sand especially sand so that's what I'm going to be fishing I'll get it untangled it's just a standoff link here because I didn't want the swivel of the of the lead rubbing on that piece of braid I've got a bead there a swivel just a three-way one just happens to be what's on there grip lead there hooks here wire trace very very lumpy wire trace it's uh, I don't know what I can tell you 400 pounds I think it is should be 175 and I bought the wrong ones a needle eye hook there straight shank just sharpened it a bit and I'm gonna whack on don't tell me I've put, I've put my jacket on it no I haven't an old frozen mackerel head here so I'm gonna go through the throat latch once crunch it through there this has been out and been fished with before but it'll do me then I'm going through the top of the skull there just like that and then I'm going to put I really did grip that over the jacket just so you see just put a little split here like that let a bit of juice come out then when I pull this down that hook sits nice and snug okay so I don't really with that eye there and the crew, I don't really need to whip that, that can go out as it is. So I'm going to go up, I was thinking of loving it out off the rocks there. But I don't fancy climbing all over the rocks, or do I? That would get me another 30 yards and probably get me in deep water. Maybe for this one I will lob it out there. So there it is. Relatively large chunk of bait for this neck of the woods. Wow. Nice to be out. I've got the crab and rag and fish on the other rods. You see there, it's really coloured. I don't know if this is so shallow here. I've got to watch these rocks aren't slippery. I may be able to get out a bit. Let's have a little look here. Wet rocks, I do not like. Yeah. Got slipper limbers all over this as well. Right, guys, I'm going to put the camera off while I work my way across here. Yeah, see the quarry and groove marks in the rocks there? Yeah, I think that was worth a walk out, boys. Not even sure I wouldn't mind fishing off here, to be honest. Hopefully it's not snaggy over there. Right, this looks about as good a platform as I'm going to get. See if we can send this out somewhere. Please don't cast off. Go on, stay untangled. Beautiful. That's about... Well, you can see where I'm specking there. If I could just get this back... Without falling in the water. Oh, I get a bit old for this, Graham. I've got to keep it high. I think I'm still good. Right. Hopefully I'm high enough. I'm not over the rocks. I think I'm okay. Yeah, I think I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> I've only been here 10 minutes and I'm soaking already. You gotta laugh, haven't you? Oh, for God's sake. Only another eight hours to go here soaking feet. Set up here. This an anything day, guys. Too good to waste. Too good to waste. Need to have that drag set right. So when he grabs it, he can pull line off. And this absolutely has got to be buried. 
Right, let's get the other rods out. Got a pulley rig here, showing this before in our various films. It's tied on there with like a bead and it, it, it pulls up like this, so the lead's at the back and basically you clip it down onto your lead like this and when it releases and you want to bring a fish in, the lead actually, the fish pulls down here and the lead look, slides right up there like that. One of my homemade grip leads with a rubber band and I can adjust the tension of the grip leads, the grip wires there. You know, tight, light, extra ones, light ones if I want to break out. And then when you pull in the sand, that should hold the bait there. And when I pull in or hook a fish, chance would be a fine thing, wouldn't it? It pulls free like that, the band, and then it drags across the sand without snagging. So I can actually wind in without having it jerking all the time where the wires would ordinarily, if you have fixed wires, would be gripping in the sand all the time and be quite annoying. So I'm gonna fire this one out there. I've just filled it right, right up with line. I just hope it's not crack off time. Bait, because I didn't mention it, it's one of those crabs lashed on. I lashed the legs down as well, otherwise it just crawls under a rock. A ragworm up the top and I should put a bit of bait thread around that as well. So a smooth hound should scoff that. It's a single hook, I haven't put a secondary panel hook up here. Go with a single. Just hope I get a fish big enough to, well, eat the whole thing. So bait wise, I've got, I've got the crabs and I've got, well I haven't got the crabs have I? I'm carrying the crabs. No that doesn't even sound right. I have crabs I'm going to be fishing with. I've got ragworm here. They all look okay. I'm tempted to put some big baits on. They say there's been some stingrays around. Crabs are in here. Those little chappies are all okay. I've got them in the shade. I might give them a drink of water in a minute. The rest of the stuff in here you don't really want to see. It's freezer clear out stuff. Bits of squid, bits of old mackerel, scad. It's all in there, just trying to keep it a little bit cool. Don't let the ragworm get really cold if you have those blocks that you can put in here. They just need to be chilled. In fact, put them over there in the shade a bit. Give these guys a drink. It's one, two, three, six guys. I think they're going to go swimming right through my lines. So, uh, sort of result. I hope the water's so cold it freezes their wedding gear off and they won't go out too far. I can see them going straight in the braid. Well, they're only having fun. They just don't think of fishing lines. Well, I feel the worst. They're wading out there now. They're going out chest deep. I've told them about the fishing line. But obviously they're all non-English speaking. They just gave me the thumbs up and then they're just going to about to go through my braid. I cannot, I'm going to catch nothing, I can see it. I just don't believe, look, look at the beach here. They couldn't go up there, they've got to come near, but they're just drawn to people, aren't they? People are drawn to people. Don't see much of the old social distances in that little group. They've come out of the water. I've got them tangled up in the line. Yeah, for sure. Bellowing and screaming at them. Didn't bother swearing because there's five of them. It's just so annoying. It's like yachtsmen at sea, the boaters, they just have to come for my boat. Why is it? What, what is it? Is it yellow? They don't like the yellow of the boat. Perhaps they don't like the blue of the t-shirt. Perhaps it attracts them. Perhaps I should be dressed all in jet black or something. Or, or, or maybe shingle colour. Shingle and sand colour outfits so they don't know I'm here. And then they go, let's go and annoy that guy over there fishing. It's not a question of being miserable, guys. It really is not really. Well, it is a bit, I suppose. But listen. They've got the whole freaking beach, it's a thousand yards that way. Why can they not just walk the other side of the fishing line? No, they have to walk out and then swim out right on top of my tote line. Anyhow, guys, if you're out there, I'm here for the evening, it's now five past four, but get yourself one of these little bottles. We're not selling them, just a little bottle of spray so you can just do your face and stuff like that because I know I'm going to get burnt even this late in the day, because the sun goes west and west is right down there. So I cannot get out of it at the moment. I've got a cap I can put on. Take a bit of sun oil. Mind you, it's the English weather. Probably last year, year that little bottle. Probably better at high water, because I see there is a bit of a 
there's a bit of a ledge here at high water um, probably only a very short chuck a very high water would be about like 30 40 yards not very far so i don't think distance casting it may be now at low water it's about an hour and a half from low medium tides not big tides and i'm just you've got to be in it to win it people i shall get back if i get a nibble so this bit here guys this is what i call the gutter i think they call it on steep shingle beaches this is just an angle here you might just be able to see the drop if it comes down the beach and drops down like a gully or a gutter. So from high water, up where I am, up at high water, well I'm, I'm not even at high water there, but up there, it's only about a 30, 40 yard lob and there's a nice channel there where I'd imagine the fish come in and feed up and down here. And that accounts for a shallow bit from there out to where those waves are breaking. And that's why they've got the weird ways over there. It's almost a sandbar there. Okay, so I didn't catch any fish, but I got some really nice shots. Watch these shots, relax, enjoy. I put a bit of music with it. Do you know what? It really is the essence of what makes us beach fishermen go out there.
really great, wasn't it, guys? No, not the fishing. That wasn't. It was a great sunset. Anyway, it left me no choice but to go and dig out some footage I had aboard High Sea Drifter. <laughs> it was one of those days as well. <laughs> well, the one they were snagged in the bottom. But I think I got a bite on the whole mackerel here. It could be the boat swinging with the wind. I had some little taps before. Let's just check that out. It could just be dogfish, but definitely I had bites. I think that one's a whole mackerel actually. It is really horrible when the wind is across the tide. The boat, the boat should be sitting stern there. It gave no wind, this is about two, not much wind. But it's just enough to do this with the boat, push the background here, and all the lines tangle up in each other. I love it. All you boat anglers know what it's like. Something is tapping away at this. There's nothing on there, but Obviously there's bait on the ground, of course there's bait on there. There's small fish down there tapping on that bait. That was that fresh squid, so we'll leave that one back down. And the one that was snagged in the bottom, I've got all my gear back, I think I'll put that back down again. Right, let's tip these out now. We've got some crabs. We've got some squid, fresh squid this is too. Voyager Discovery just using sections like you'd almost fry up and eat of squid and then topping off with a frozen hardback crab like that. You can only try these things, they're all different experimental baits. When you're sea fishing, see the tide, there's hardly any tide at all. I've got the chum bag over there, I haven't even put my shark line out at the moment. The, ch the chum and the smell is going right back there. Well, there's a bite on that and that is a whole mackerel. That is a whole mackerel, I think. So I'm getting a mishmash of different bites. Nothing showing yet. Beautiful doe there, cannot fault the day at the moment. Well, I can fault it, I haven't caught anything. But the slick's going away well. The bait's thawed out. I've got some fresh mackerel that we caught off the beach. Just thawed them out. Spare crab there, let's not waste him. That saves a bit of weight. And I took frozen stuff here which I might or might not use. So I need to keep the best of the bait. It's thawed out but needs to be chilled. That's still that's still frozen there. That one's okay, I haven't got a clue what's in there. If you keep your bait chilled. Well, I'm getting bites on whole mackerel, squid, squid and crab, everything. They're not really hard rattly bites, but I'm getting snagged a couple of times with the boat swinging. So it's such small tides and this awful northerly wind, which I want to shoot. But it's the way it is, so I'm not holding out a great deal of hope, I've got to be perfectly honest, but it is dying down a bit, the wind, the wind is dying down a bit. And I've swung around, I don't mind where it sits as long as it sits in one place, not this awful swinging, that's why I'm getting snagged up. But also, getting snagged up with the lead tells me it's rough ground. If it's rough ground, there could be fish like black bream there. Well, I want to catch those, I want to catch something, don't I? So I'm going to drop down a small hook like this. It's just worth putting a set down because I'm getting these tappy bites. Um, obviously those baits are too big for them. So this is what I've got, a straight pattern ostery. So I've tied it up, a clip swivel, a very small lead. A couple of loops with the snoods off there, as you can see, this is, I think, about 25 pound mono. Very small hooks there. I'll tell you where they are, actually. I like using these, I use them, I use them for carp a lot. Big fish, barbel, sea fish, it is called a camasan. No, no, we're not selling them, I'm just telling you so guys know what they are. They're almost like a tiny barb, chemically sharpened. They are size four, 10 in a pack, but they are wide gape. Specialist hook, specialist, wow. I'm a specialist fisherman. I'm so special, I can't catch anything. I like the hook, but the rig itself, as you can see, look, two hooks there, which I'm gonna bait with bits of that fresh squid. But there's something, some of you might, it's a bit old school, but listen, there's my swivel to join my main line to my rig, but it's a three-way swivel that I've made it with. So I can tie a third hook on there, 
very very short like that which won't tangle look with the other one you have to make sure going up or down that they don't tangle that's the idea of it so i'm going to drop these down we'll see if we can find out what the culprits are that are a nibbling on my baits so here we go let's get these i don't like going with did you hear that whoa 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 whoa, whoa. hang on a minute boys That didn't seem like the bottom. That did not seem like the bottom. Could be a dogfish tugging at it. I've got a feeling this was the whole mackerel, but you never, oh, yes, 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 yes. Something is a nibbling. Well, it has been, but this feels like a bigger fish. That's a whole bait, so I've just got to give him time to take it. I'm on a 50 pound one. I haven't even got my shark line out. You might be able to see there. There's my slick going back that way. The chum bucket's down there. Lots of little particles in there. And I must hang some mackerel feathers over because you cannot beat fresh bait. I think this guy's still tapping. I think he might have it now. The problem with the way I've hooked it, I might wind in and miss him. And indeed I have. Nope. I feel nothing. What are these fish that are down there? You saw the run there, that was a good run. I'll check that bait in a minute. I don't have that down as a dogfish, I really don't. So the small baits, bearing in mind I get nibbled at the moment. I'm just going to use very, very tiny pieces like this. They're the catching tentacles of the squid. Bearing in mind these are freshwater hooks and because they're long and thin these bits of squid like I can thread it around almost like you could do with a worm to be honest just go up the tentacle now, that should be a pretty tough bait for them to chew on sounds like that one's caught cool. yeah they're both caught in the bottom so it's a tis rough ground that I'm over I just wonder what these small fish are that are down there Hopefully we find out and I don't want to start losing gear. Because being a beam on sea, it's rocking and a rolling. Now look, I just wound up. This is the third one I bought up like this. Nothing. They've had the squid and the crab off. Now I'm going to put it the other way round. I'm going to gaunch the crab on crossways like that. And put a piece of squid on the top of the crab like that. I always think that makes it look a bit unsuspecting, you know, it looks like the crab is actually feeding on the squid. And you've got two lots of smell, smell off the squid, smell off the crab. It can't fail, can it? <laughs> um, yeah, maybe it can, man. It could be a peculiar flat tide now. It could be the, I've got the tides wrong. Surely not. Well, if I don't get any more bites or convert anything here, guys, I'm going to go fishing over here on a bank and try just drifting because there's nothing worse than anchoring and not fishing properly. Absolutely, no point. And these, as you can see, there they are. Hopefully you can see what I've done now. Lead. Two longer snoods up here. A shorter one off a three-way swivel. That way you can drop these down fast and you're working the top sort of two or three feet of water column whereas if you had a long flowing trace on a running ledge you couldn't drop it down fast it would spin up and tangling your trace there's the bottom as soon as it hits the bottom in gear drag off and wait and see if anything rattles on that well the wind's gone down and the anchor's holding and there is the culprit on mackerel yes the dogfish he's mullered a complete whole mackerel and chewed it down to a size which he can then take so i've saved the blank after a fashion all right i've got some dubious squid there i'm going to lob it way over that way out the way and hopefully it doesn't tangle up i'm trying to get little bites here on this one I can just feel them I think 
I can feel them and I can't hook them. I think they're pouting. I just got that feeling they're pouting. So I'm going to give this about another 20 minutes if I don't pick another fish off. I'm going to have to go looking for another mark, I'm afraid. I don't like this colour in the water. We've had it all summer. Most, most strange. I've got some, I wonder if I drop down some freshwater hooks in it, like a size 12 or something like that, just to see what these, these fish are. Right, you can tell it's a freezer clear out time. I've got some frozen ragworm. Look at the little pinches on that. Can you see the fangs, the, pi the pinches on this one here? Good job he's dead, isn't it? That's a worm with huge fangs called the ragworm. They don't freeze as a bait, but I have caught rats on them. I have no problem trying to thread enough on here to actually make a gobby, unattractive bait. These are expensive to buy. When they're live, great. When they're dead, yucky. So if I can catch a fish out of them, if I can catch a fish out of these, that'll be even even better. So quite big baits away from the hook. Let's just see, frozen ragworm, are any fish going to eat that other than the occasional wrasse off the shore? Oh, yeah. Was that a bite? There we go, that's on those frozen worms. That is on frozen ragworm. Let's just see if there's anything down there. Oh, this time we've got a fish. Hang on a minute, boys. All is not lost. Now we're going to see what the culprit is. Frozen ragworm. I'm so pleased I kept them. Just goes to show you. I've got small pouting or small bream. Whatever it is, it's a fish. Two fish. Oh, <laughs> double whammy. My goodness me. Oh, and my other line as well. Well, it couldn't all, it couldn't all be good, could it? So there we got a black bream, people. I just want to make sure I get smacked in the face. A black bream and a scad. And that ragworm, frozen ragworm, was down there. Come aboard, Mr. Scad. That ragworm was down there seconds. In fact, I was just sorting out the other rod. Boys, I've dropped those, those manky old ragworm down. It's hit the bottom, I've turned round the rods on. This feels like a black bream. I cannot believe why they chewing the squid off. I know they're only tiny, but it's nice to catch a species and find out what there is. It could be a scad. Oh look, double bream, double bream. So that just goes to show you, you know, take, ouch, ouch. They're only small, yes, they're only small bream, but good little scraps on light tackle. I've actually got, I think in here, I think I've got a telescopic rod, and that's the sort of thing. If you had, imagine all the people on the boat here, one, two, three, four, five, six people I've got on the boat, well, one with six rods, what sport they'd have catching all these small fish. And they are the ones that are stripping me off, which is why I'm quite happy using the crab. Well, there must be a lot down there. And that, if you remember earlier, when I was talking, I did say, it kept snagging with that rough ground. I just did figure there might be some bream down there because it was rough. I'm using literally, ah, oh, look, disgusting. I'm virtually pouring this on the hook and they're just having it big time. Obviously I'm gonna run out, but at least I'm catching a few fish while I'm waiting for something larger to come along. So now the question is, I was going to move, wasn't I, about 20 minutes ago. Now what do I do now? Because if those small fish are there, is there a chance bigger fish are there? The problem being, all those little guys are going to shred absolutely everything else I put down there. Other than the hardback crab. I'm wondering, should I put two or three crabs on one hook? Which I don't normally do. I'm going to put another rig down in a minute. Today is a day of experimentation and a freezer clear out of bait. Just goes to show you, I've now had three species on the freezer clear out. Can't wait to get this down. It's amazing, you know, you, you just need to get a few bites, don't you? Just a few bites. Let's get in the seat of power. Just a few bites to turn your day around. One big fish on one of these other rods would be handy. 
I'm going to make a rod. I'm not going to put my shark line out because I think I'm too close to the to the shore, really. Chum's going out there. Could be a thrasher shark in there. Right, I'm on the bottom. They're on it straight away. I'm going to bring the rod back here. Look, look, look. Can you look, look at the rattling? Can you see the rattling? I'll hold it dead still with the camera. Bang, 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 bang. What you do is just lift like this. And they're either on. You don't almost have to strike them. They are in plague proportions down there. So, I think I'm going to wheel it in and do double or triple crabs. Oh, my word. There's a lot of bream down there. That's on braid. You can see the bites. Hammering away on those small hooks. Eventually, I'll strip all the... Uh, ragworm off because such a soft bait. Maybe I should put a very very thin sliver of squid on there as well. Well it's every throw a coconut. Oh my word. I just noticed guys not only do I get my line again tangled but they strip that top hook as well. So they, that's the bonus hook that's on that three-way swivel there, so they've taken that one as well. And there they are, little black bream, they still give you a spike. Oh, 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 I hear a reel of ticking. Back you go. Got to grow to pan size. Just a bit of broken ground and that's why the, uh, I mean look at what I'm using. It's like jelly, just putting jelly on the hook. Ragworm jello. They don't seem to be bothered. All they do is stretch. Now you can mix salt with lugworm and, and wrap them individually in newspaper, especially black lug, and they will freeze down. But ragworm, as you can see here, just go to a yucky nothing. Well, I'm going to have a move, guys. Very, very quiet here. I'm going to go try and find a bit of tide. There's something I've been meaning to try for a long time. I don't think I've got quite enough current or drift here. Is this set up here, especially in the autumn? A squid jig as a weight and some small feathers here. So just like having feathers, like you'd leave feathers out, because the rocking of the boat is enough to move this squid jig. Because you do, with a squid jig, you don't crank it in fast, you're just popping it, letting it sink, popping it, letting it sink. And I reckon the action of the boat rocking at anchor like this, or even on the drift, is enough to get the chance of a squid. Now I know a lot of guys say they come out at night, but I have heard guys been catching them in the daytime, in the autumn and the winter. So give it a go, I'll, I'll give it a go. Yes, I haven't caught anything, but I also haven't caught any mackerel. But I've got the chum slick there, so I just figured it was worth a shout. It's worth a chance, it's had half an hour or so, but I think I'm gonna move in there, just see if I can't have one more anchor. And then I think, you know what, I think I'm gonna go drifting and see what I can pick up there. Well, I've made another move. I am in, on the edge of a big bank, actually. I just pan around here and you can see, got the chum slick out there again. There's another guy up there. I think he's drifting in a channel. You probably won't see him. Just over there. Just there. He's drifting in a channel. Maybe he's going up and down for... I don't think he's bass fishing. I think he's after mackerel or something, or just pleasure fishing. I mean, it's a pleasure to be out, really. It's a lovely, sparkly day here. I will say one thing, the water looks... Let me climb up here. It looks a lot clearer here. There's a slight flow here. I'm going to give it an hour here. I'm going to go outside and try another bank if I don't get any bites here. Um, I've got some mackerel out of the freezer, some old max, and they've got to go as well. So it's a real freezer clear out day. Can I catch anything else at all? I can't understand the chums coming out. Why am I not getting mackerel? There is something wrong with the UK fishing. Yes, some people catch them, but the majority of, of fish, you know, that Used to be about years ago, this time of year, when the water is at its warmest. We should be plagued with them, and we're not. I'm going to take my jacket off, which could be bad luck, and put my life jacket on, which is definitely good luck. Don't forget, all those life jacket people, 
always wear a life jacket, usual health and safety. Some countries demand it. I think in Florida, when I used to take Mike and Charlotte there, we got family holidays, I think the kids had to have the life jacket on if something like the engine was underway or you were floating on the water or whatever, you know, it's very, very, very strict and rightly so, really. It's good, but you know, over here it's optional. If you want to put a life jacket on, put it on. If you don't, don't. Best to put it on. Although people do say, like the Jaws film, really, isn't it? You know, you say, oh, I'll never put a life jacket on again. It's sort of similar because if I'm 10 miles out to sea in a three knot tide in 14 degrees of temperature, it's not looking good with a life jacket, is it? Of course, you could have the phone in um, a Ziploc bag, so you could make a call, that sort of type of thing. But I think generally you've got five minutes in the water here, less in the winter. Oh, come on, fish, do me a favour. I've even got the, uh, the slurry, the slurry ragworm out there, and they're not getting any bites. I won't give it too long here, maybe, maybe barely an hour. Right, the anchor's all been uh, pulled up. I've now moved out offshore a bit. I'm just going on the drift for a while, but there's still no tide. I know they're very small tides. I've got what they call a wind drift. So I've got, I think about half a knot, just over half a knot. And I've got some whole mackerel down there just bouncing along the bottom. Might get an outside chance of a bass. I'd be incredibly lucky with no tide like this, but you never know. I'll probably give it an hour or so. And if, the, if this is the tide and I'm stuck with it, well then I might just as well put the anchor down on top of the bank. I might just as well. If I catch, I catch. If I don't, I don't. I had envisaged having a really nice long day today, but I got the feeling the radio is so quiet. I've heard like three conversations on Channel 10, the local uh, chatter channel. Um, one guy had had some pouting. Somebody else had a dogfish. And I think, this, I think the same guy had the pouting had a, a baby conger, a small conger, a little strap thing. So, not wild fishing, because that radio is crackling normally on a Sunday. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. Beautiful day, but not for fishing, it appears. I think it's to do with the tide. Also, this last year, there's been like a smokiness in the water all along the south coast, where it should be absolutely tap water clear. Nobody seems to be able to tell us what it is. Is it an algal bloom? Who knows what it is? But it's definitely, definitely put a lot of fish off. Oh, a little tick, I've got one up there. I've got my long trace, long flying trace, and a bass bait just bumping along the bottom over this bank. And I'll probably have to motor up again in a minute, but I'm just going to see what we can get. Yeah, hardly any blue shots, hardly any mackerel, hardly any cod, or zero cod last year, it's a shocker. But we live in hope, us fishermen, don't we? We just, we just, we just don't give up. I don't know why. We just don't. You always think the next day's the day. The next day's the day. The next cast. That's the one. The next drop down. That's the one. I'm the same. I am beginning to wane a little bit. I need a bite. I must have been hour and a half doing these drifts. I've done a good six or seven. The speed is picking up all the time, so I can't understand. I'm not picking up bites. I'm now doing two knots. There's no rip showing on the bank that I can see. So I've waited long enough, but being a neat tide, I figure the rips aren't going to show. That would be uh, my take on it. So I don't know whether to go for another drift or not. I don't want to keep piling my time in. I've got one last throw of the dry set's going in right inside. And hopefully if the tide is running out here, it's going to be running in there. And I figure if I cut some of the mackerel up we've been using in here, trying to catch a bass, then I might get a bit of juice in the water, you know? I might get something in the water that'll uh, hopefully entice a nibble. I so I definitely need to get something I've got a rod up there. I've got a mackerel on that one, scad on that one, that's that scad I caught. Squid strip on that one, and that one is bouncing along. It's probably now off the uh, back of the bank. But it's mostly, mostly a wind drift, I feel. Well, I'm tucked in here, people. <laughs> I'm the last man standing. In fact, I think I'm the last boat floating other than this big yacht behind me, and he's like 40 feet long, and I'm not. Uh, nothing at all. I'm not going to change baits. Bait. It's just the way it is. And unfortunately, it's gone right round to like a southwesterly. If I come out here, no doubt you'll hear the wind howling. Waves are getting bigger. I'm getting pitched around. I've been chopping up all my old rubbish bait from the freezer. 
some of it's gone over the side, some of it's gone in a little small tub for shore fishing, for doing some chum, maybe some mullet, or uh, a bit of shore fishing generally, so I haven't wasted all of it. But I think I've got to pull the pin and go, because it looks like I'm the only one left here. And I really don't need to be a statistic. Always respect the sea. And I didn't hear the forecast. I know it's changing, a guy told me in shore, um, you know, he said the next day tomorrow is a bit gnarly. So if that comes in early, I've got to chop and punch all the way back into this. And you can see I'm pitching pretty much all over the place. I'll come back here and balance. I've had about 20 minutes cutting all my chum up, so I sort of didn't notice how much has come up. It's, it's, it's blowing 20 plus now. So uh, that's more than enough. 15s anyway, gusting 20. It's one of those days, just happens to everybody. I had all those little bream, so hopefully you learned something making that rig up. Let me get in here out this gale. Hope you learned something, and I think the best thing I can do is maybe do something, either go fishing, freshwater fishing, or get in the tackle shop. Tackle shop? God forbid. Tackle shack. See if I can find some more tips for you guys. We'll see you in the next episode, or even I might tackle something on the end of this one.